I'm Brooke Hall, Digital Engagement for the City of Fridley. We are out here on the 2019 Night to Unite visiting block parties, talking to community members and learning about their neighborhoods. Good evening, Fridley community. This is Brian Werke, your Director of Public Safety. I am here with the Mayor, Scott Lund. And Mayor Lund, you and I get to drive to all these Night to Unite parties every year. I what's, get chauffeured around all year, every year. What's the most What's the most fun you have when we're out doing these parties? Well, I'd like to say the eating, but I see that you already worked on that. I like to talk with people because I don't see a lot of these people except one time a year. So how long, how many years have you been the mayor? I'm now in my 19th year, so I'm no longer a newbie. So have you made a night to night party every, all 19 years? Uh, yes. See how important night to night is to our community? Anything else you'd like to add? I, I, I I'd like to say that I can't imagine not going to Night to Unite because it's a blast, you know, and so people, you shouldn't be watching this live on TV, so be out there at your block party, would you? Because the only time that we had a short one was when it rained really hard, so. Well, good. Mayor, thank you for this interview, and we hope you for another 19 years of mayorship. Well, that's probably not going to happen, but <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Jenny Fetro, I'm a Fridley kid. Born and raised, um, and parents are still in town here. And David. My name is David Costick. I've been with Fridley for the last couple years. And we have the best neighborhoods in the entire city, yes, we so we're glad to be here. Uh, this year we're giving out these drug deactivation kits. So if you have prescription meds, opioids, or whatever you have that you want to get rid of uh, safely, you put them in this little pouch. I think you add water. Fill it halfway, wait 30 seconds, and then it's safe to throw in the garbage and uh, not dangerous to kids and pets and the environment. My name is Alyssa Cruzel, and I'm the Community Engagement Specialist with the City of Fridley. And I am Mandy Meisner, Anoka County Commissioner for District 4, which is Fridley, Columbia Heights, Hilltop, and part of Spring Lake Park. And we're out here this evening at Night to Unite with the, with the City of Fridley, and we're just talking with some residents and some community members, finding out what they enjoy about Fridley. So, Mandy, can you tell us a little bit about um, how long you've lived in Fridley and what you enjoy about the community? Yeah, absolutely. So, I've lived in Fridley for 19 years, although that's still kind of considered a newbie if you are from Fridley, because a lot of people have grown up here, and there's generations that uh, have been in Fridley. Um, and actually, Night to Unite is, is great because I mean in this day and age I think we you know we come to our homes we park our cars in the garage and then we don't really get out and and mingle with neighbors on a regular basis so this is one time a year when I think everyone in the neighborhood just is are able to catch up and see one another and it's really nice yeah uh, what do you uh, enjoy about um, kind of your neighborhood and, and all the great resources in, in Fridley? Well, I am super lucky because I live along the Mississippi River. And so I would say the natural uh, resources and the park system in Fridley is, is really nice. I mean, it's just a relaxing way to you know end your day and just to have that out in your own backyard kind of thing. Yeah. What are the things that you're hearing from residents um, in regards to our community and some of the issues that are facing the residents here in, in Fridley and the entire District 4? Um, well, I mean, I think at top of mind typically are uh, school districts and the quality of education that kids are getting and usually public safety as well. Um, people really want to feel safe and what's the crime rate like. And I would say uh, both those things um, are doing really well in District 4, in Fridley in particular. So we have a good school system and um, our, our police uh, staff do a great job with being in community, having relationships and um, really keeping that at a low rate. Mm -hmm. Awesome, well thanks so much for talking with yeah, us. Yeah, thank you. Well I'm here with Ben, a Fridley resident, and is this your first time attending a night to night party? This is my fourth time. Oh, fourth time, and what do you think? Uh, we love it, my wife actually hosts it. She's the one that like makes it all happen, so uh, we like to bring the block together and meet our neighbors and get to know everybody. How long have you lived in Fridley? I have lived in that house for nine years. And what do you like about it? I love the community, I love the people that are around us, I love my neighborhood. Um, I, every time that we've reached out from help, for help from the community, from the city and whatnot, we've always been really well received. Uh, our community resource officer, Nico, has been wonderful to us. Uh, we, just, we, just, we just really like where we're at. We like the location, it's really convenient to get anywhere in the city. Um, we really enjoy being here. Awesome, thanks so much, Ben. Yeah, thank you. 
I just wanted to bring up a couple talking points that we're trying to spread throughout the community. And the first one's all of your favorite, and that's the hands-free cell phone law. I hope everybody's got their phones in, in some type of storage cup holder, wherever you put it, your glove compartment or wherever, that's where it belongs. So we're really cracking down on cell phones and hands. Hands-free cell phone law went into effect on August 1st. So It's only 50 bucks for the first offense. I already gave it to him. And the, <laughs> the mayor just mails in 50 bucks every month to the police department. You can do a single touch activation on your phones. That's it. Where do you get those holders for your car? Well, I, I, should, I got mine at but I, I can't endorse any stores. I don't, I don't own any stock in So, So hands-free is a big one, so we'll be out writing, right, stopping a lot of people for that. The second thing is if you know anybody that's interested in public safety, we're always looking for community members that are interested in being a paid on-call firefighter. If anyone is interested, go online 24-7. You can go and apply and we'll process, we'll process that. Uh, if you have anybody in your neighborhoods, friends, family, whoever, I'm encouraging them. We're always looking for public safety uh, paid on-call firefighters. Also next year, you're gonna see an, an initiative out from the Fridley Police Department is we're putting on, we've got a, we, we're able to secure a grant that for a DUI officer. And all that officer is going to do for one straight year is gonna go around and stop cars and look for DUIs, um, any type of narcotics uh, under the influence. And that's all they're gonna be doing. We're trying to clean up the corridors, University and Highway 65 with some of the pedestrian issues that we've had, um, some of the bar traffic, and basically the idea is to keep our community safe. We want to get drunk drivers off the road, and that's all that officer will be doing is doing uh, DUI patrols. So you see a lot of traffic stops from that officer. Um, and then lastly, I just want to remind you at our new city hall, we have a safe exchange area. If you're buying something from Craigslist or Facebook Messenger, or whatever you're buying stuff from, a child custody, anything that you want to switch transactions or anything you want a safe place go to the parking lot in the front of the city hall there's a big blue pole with a light on it we have cameras we have lighting there's a sign there and you're safe there and if there's an issue you push the button it'll notify us and we'll be there to help you so if you don't want people to come to your home or go to someone else's home feel free to use that safe exchange area so that's what we have for re talking points and it's free of charge unless you want to pay some of the mayor's cell phone bills for holding it in his hand um, but that's what we have. Uh, we're really pleased with the new city hall. We couldn't be more. It's, it's an incredible experience to have fresh air, space. Uh, it's been a beautiful facility. Hi, this is Lieutenant Jeff Guest with the Fridley Police Department. And I'm at, located at the CeeLo Apartments. And I'm with the property manager, Christine. Good evening, how are you? I am very, very well, sir. How are you? Fantastic. Glad you Fantastic come night tonight. Yes. Beautiful couldn't, night. Couldn't have asked for better weather. Is this your first event? It is my first Nietzsche night here at the Cielo. Um, I've done them at other properties previously, but this is my first event here at the Cielo, the first big one. What prompted you to have a or host an event tonight? Well, I've always been pretty passionate about the Nietzsche night as a theory because I think that neighborhoods and communities um, can do so much more together. It takes a village. Um, so I've always wanted to do the 1998 since I took over this property. So it was on my agenda from the very beginning. What attracted you to this particular property to manage? I'm a Fridley native um, and this is a beautiful new development. It is luxury. It is got everything you could want in a property um, and the residents and the staff are outstanding and being seven minutes from my house is not a bad thing. And how's your experience been with the city, the police department, the community in general? You know, we've had, we've built a really good relationship. Um, I took over in January and um, since that time we've had really good correspondence back and forth. We've had a lot of correspondence back and forth because the property the size is challenging at times. So um, there have been challenges but we've tackled them together and we've come a long way. What feedback have you gotten from residents that have moved in here or prospective tenants? Yeah, people really like um, a number of things. Number one is they really like the location. Us Fridleyites kind of kept Fridley a nice little secret, kept it all to ourselves because it's so convenient. We're right off the 694 corridor. We're convenient to everything. You can get everywhere within about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, so people really like that. They like um, the amenities of the buildings. We've got fitness centers. We've got really nice community rooms. We've got great amenities. What kind of activities 
do you have for your tenants tonight? Well, here? we kind of try to come up with something for everybody. We've got great food. Um, we solicited all of the local businesses in the area to participate. So we capitalized on Banquets of Minnesota, which is right uh, on Central Avenue, to do the food. They're doing a great taco bar. We've got ping pong. We've got hula hoop. We've got cornhole. We've got ladder ball. We've got frisbee. We've got Torque Brewery, which is another local business that's doing samplings. And we've got bingo. And we've got face painting and bouncy houses and tried to cover it all. Lots of activities for everyone. Lots of activities and for everyone. And it's also my understanding that there's been some neighbors nearby yeah. that have also come and joined your Yeah, event. we invited kind of the neighbors on the perimeter of the building to come and join us so that, again, it's it's about community and that doesn't just mean the people in the Cielo apartments, it means the neighborhood at large. These are fantastic buildings, very nice down here. We're glad to have you in Fridley. Thanks for your partnership. Thanks, Enjoy Jeff. the evening. Thank you, Jeff. I'm Officer Faber with the Fridley Police Department. I'm a longtime resident in Fridley, um, and I've been working for the city of Fridley for four years now. Uh, I grew up in the city of Fridley my whole life, and this is the neighborhood I grew up in. Chad is one of our uh, block captains in the city. And uh, Chad, how long have you been a block captain? Since 2005 we've been in Fridley, but we've been a block captain for about five years. Okay, and what do you like about being a block captain so, in the city of Fridley? It's great to have this sense of community and now we're expanding here to join with others and learn and meet more people. I've met just a wonderful family tonight and it's fun. How can you beat this? It's okay. great. Do you have anything else you would like to see improvements on the city of Fridley or uh, uh, any future changes or any uh, future ideas for the city of Fridley? Thanks for mentioning it. You know, I think you guys are working so hard to bring change and do great things. And I was remarking earlier to our friend, our common friend, how you've covered a lot of ground yourself in such a little time. And we're thankful for the people of Fridley. They've taken good care of us. Ideas include, I like to envision a park down there close to the railroad tracks. I'd like to see even more community in Fridley. I think we've got the sunshine to complement that space. That's just an idea I've got. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, what's one thing you love about the city of Fridley? Well, you can't beat the people, right? Friendly Fridley, come on now. Right. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> you got it, good to see you tonight. We'd like to introduce ourselves really quick. Um, I'm Officer Patrick. I grew up, uh, Officer Patrick Faber, I grew up in the city of Fridley my whole life. Um, I currently live in Blaine now, but uh, I've been working for Fridley for four years. Uh, went to Stevenson Elementary, Fridley Middle, and Fridley High School. And uh, we're here today as your uh, neighborhood resource officers. And so if you guys have any specific uh, issues within the neighborhood, you guys can contact me or Officer Hendrickson about those issues um, that we can try to help resolve or uh, mediate. Um, this is Officer Hendrickson. Hi, I'm Officer Tyler Hendrickson. Um, I've been with Fridley for two years. Uh, beforehand, I worked for Ramsey County Sheriff's Office for four years. I'm in the jail system there. Um, before that, I played some football and all that fun stuff, but I, I originated from St. Paul, east side of St. Paul, I went to Johnson High School. Beforehand, before coming here, I had no ties to Fridley. Um, I actually worked with a co-worker at Ramsey County who applied out here, who got a job, and I kind of used him as a reference, and that's how I became out here. Um, like Officer Faber said, any questions regarding anything, uh, we'll leave you with some of our business cards. You can email us, call us, we'll get back to you as fast as you can, or we can talk about it tonight. Uh, I'm Zach Lamont. I'm actually a Fridley Police Explorer. I'm not on the police force, but I hope to be someday. Um, it's pretty much just like a Boy Scouts for people that are freshmen to senior year in high school. It's just like a little program that we, you know, practice. And then at the end of the year, we go to Rochester and we do our competition. And that's pretty much it. So if you guys have any nieces, nephews, uh, children, etc. in the city of Fridley or have some sort of connection to the city of Fridley. Um, get in contact with Officer Murphy, who's the coordinator with the Explorer Post, and they might be able to get you guys on to the unit. Um, the Explorer Post is a very cool and unique thing. It uh, connects our uh, youth in our community, our high school age kids, uh, with uh, the police department and maybe gives them the opportunity to see if they want to do that for a career. And so that's kind of a cool opportunity for these kids. It's like, um, 
uh, Mr. Lamont said about uh, it's like Boy Scouts for law enforcement. So it's law enforcement specific. They do competitions. They learn what we do as police officers, and uh, then they go and compete uh, both in Duluth and in Rochester. And then they do like a mini St. Cloud or uh, St. Paul Cup too. Hello everyone. My name is Zach Krampka. I sp spend my time in the with the city manager and in community development. So if you have any questions about the new development that's happening, I bet you I can have somewhat of an answer for you. And also I would love to hear how you think things are going in Fridley. Please, please tell me. So that new development that he's kind of focusing on is the development uh, for our old uh, police department and our old campus and the uh, brand new development up at the Civic Campus. So you can kind of specify on that. And then some of the other random development throughout the city. Do you guys have any generic questions about the police department, the city as a whole, that we can answer as a group? So uh, how far along is that redevelopment? Is that your At our old building or yeah, the, the old building? The old building. Are so in the, in, about tearing it down or? Yep. yep, in the next couple of weeks it will start to be torn down and it'll take about a month. Oh really? And then the plan is they're going to build a senior apartment, uh, senior apartment complex. Yep. The demand is high. So then uh, at the new development, the new Civic Campus, uh, they built the Pulte Homes there, uh, right by the Civic Campus. In between the Pulte Homes and the new Civic Campus uh, is going to be about 72 townhomes that are going to be built there as well. There'll be a trail that'll lead into the regional park and there'll also be a playground uh, on the, that'd be on the east side there. So all that property was still owned by the city. Um, beyond there to the east is actually Lock Park and the county owns that property. Okay. So, yep, they won't be doing anything with the park. Okay. Well, I'm here with Community Engagement Specialist Alyssa Cruzel. Cruzel? Cruzel, yes. Got it. And she's here to talk to us a little bit about the 2020 census that will be coming up. So what do we need to know? Yeah, so the census is a process that happens every 10 years. Um, and it's where uh, we get an accurate count of all of the residents and all the people who are living within the city of Fridley. And so the census information is going to be coming out uh, directly to your mailboxes uh, sometime about March 12th. Um, and it'll ask you to either go online, call, or fill out a paper survey. And it's going to ask you questions about um, your address, who lives in your household, your contact information, and some other demographic information. This, uh, the census information is really important for helping us get an accurate uh, snapshot about who's living in the city of Fridley because if we have an accurate count of who's living in the city uh, we're gonna get some federal funds uh, to help us with community programs within the city so it's really important that you fill out your census so March uh, 2020 is when you should start to get some information in your mailboxes and if people want to get involved how can they do that yeah the city of Fridley has a complete count committee um, it's a group of uh, residents within the city who is helping uh, they're helping decrease uh, awareness and participation in the census so if you're interested um, um, find me, uh, find my contact information on the City of Fridley website and you can help get involved. Awesome, thanks so much Alyssa. So the first thing you want to do if you ever see an emergency or you think that one's going to happen is call 911. Um, if you do that, that gives us time to get here. If you think that you might be able to put out the fire, um, what can happen is the fire gets a little bigger than you thought it would be. and. If you wait to call 911, then that just delays us getting there. So what we recommend is you call 911 as soon as you see a problem, and then let's say you do get the fire out, that's great. We'll still come and follow up and kind of see if it um, extended into like your cabinets or anything, because we have special equipment that is able to detect that. And if you're not able to get it out, then we come with lots of water and um, tools to get that out. Along with a fire extinguisher, you can order these or buy these, they're called fire stop. So this is just a magnet and there's a wick. Let's say you do have a fire. Well, if this fire gets hot enough and high enough to reach this fire stop, um, it lets out a chemical that is able to put out fires. If there is a fire that starts, take a lid and slide it over the top. So a fire is composed of three things. That is going to be the heat. So the heat source, so the heat would be obviously the flame or you know if you have an electric burner. Fuel, your fuel is probably going to be your food or the oil that you have in there that's burning. And then oxygen. If you take away any of those three things, the fire will go out. Here you can't really take away the heat because if you've been cooking for a while, everything is going to be pretty hot. 
you can't really take away the um, the fuel because you're not going to come in here and scoop out the food, right, or the oil. So by putting this on here, you can get rid of the oxygen. Um, and that should make the fire go on its own. Another thing we recommend, if the fire is in your stove, shut it and turn it off. Because if you shut it, what are you doing? Taking away the oxygen. Very good. Let's go through what we do again. If you were to come upon a kitchen fire, kitchen fire house, oh. what do you want to do? You want to... Call 911. Very good. Call 911. And then what? Um, uh, turn off your stove. And Very good. Yeah. And then what? Try putting it out, but or make sure your oven's closed and then have a fire extinguisher. Awesome. Well, let's see that. You walk in and there's a fire. What are you gonna do? Oh. Oh, hi. First thing you're gonna do is what? Call 911. Yeah. Okay. Good. Very good. Yep. And then we're gonna. Call. <laughs> what? Open it up. Where do you oh, have a fire? With the bottle. With the bottle. There you go. I'm Crime Prevention Specialist Courtney Miller and I'm here with my friend Officer Nico Wallet and we're visiting block parties for our annual Night to Unite event. We've been going to a lot of great block parties and one thing we're talking about is food shortage here in our community and our block parties are partying with a purpose this year and they're collecting food that will be donated to SECA. All the food collected at the around 100 block parties tonight will be collected at City Hall for the next couple days and then we will be donating all that food to SECA. Another thing we're sharing with our community is what's called Tip 411. It's an anonymous tip line that you can send in tips or any information about suspicious activity in your area. It's completely anonymous and you can download the app, go online, or um, go to the city's website and you can submit those tips. And we're also trying to really get out the heart safe message for our community. Heart safe is uh, keeping, pe keeping people aware about sudden cardiac arrest and how you as a everyday citizen can jump in when you see people in medical emergencies. We're gonna be hosting a free training August 13th from four to five, it's gonna be first aid. And then from five to six, there'll be CPR and AED training. And that's gonna be at the new uh, Civic Campus uh, and it's free for anyone in the public who wants to show up. So tell your friends and come on out and, and uh, learn how to give back to your community when someone's in need. And do you want to talk about the Police Explorer program a little bit? Yep, we have our uh, first uh, meeting tomorrow night. Uh, you can contact Sean Murphy at the Fridley Police Department for the exact times of the class. It is a informational meeting for youth 14 to 17 years old who are interested in a career in law enforcement. So that meeting is also going to be at the Civic Campus, and Sean, Officer Sean Murphy is the contact for that. A lot of great information was shared tonight, and a lot of good community building and getting to know our neighbors. Um, we really appreciate these neighborhood, neighborhoods inviting us into their communities, letting us get to know them um, on, on a more personal level. And we have to give a big shout out to our sponsor this year. The Fridley Lions Club donated a good chunk of money that allowed us to give block parties some free goodies um, that they were able to share with their neighbors and, and really build that sense of Fridley community. So it's been a great night here. Well, it's been another great year of Night to Unite. Thank you for everybody who's participated, all the block captains who put in so much work in organizing these parties and all the attendees. And thank you to our sponsors and Bob's Produce who always donate peaches for each of the block parties. Thank you, thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next year.
This has been a production of Fridley Municipal Television, Channel 17. Thanks for watching.